What if? Powerful entryway into possibilities that you hadn't even considered. The power of the question, what if? Some years ago, I was in a coaching conversation with a client who had been betrayed by somebody that they loved and trusted, and they just felt like their heart was breaking. So I asked them a what if question. What if your heart is not breaking? What if that ache that you're experiencing is an expansion, a heart expansion into a new understanding of who this person really is, of the quality of the relationship where it is right now, and of new possibilities for you in terms of how you are showing up during this time. That immediately changed the course of the conversation. We were able to expand our thinking, we were able to experiment with possibilities, and therefore we we're able to come to a space in which the client could find their own power again in this situation. And so what if? So during this session, I'd like to explore with you the possibilities of the what ifs during this disruption that has happened in the world. My name is Rachel Adams. I'm a leadership practitioner and coach. So let's start with the word disruption and consider it in a different way. The, the root rupt actually comes from the Latin, from the Latin <laughs> break. Um, and so rupt is the, is the root that you will find in words such as corrupt, disrupt, abrupt rupture right and so when we think about anything with rupt in it we're thinking about a breakage now sometimes we consider breakages negatively but in coaching when we have a breakdown it's an opportunity to shift your observer it's an opportunity to see a situation in a dynamically different way it presents a possibility and so if we think about this disruption and we're able to ask what good what if questions, we can come out with new understanding, but beyond that, with new practices that allow us to emerge into a different world altogether than what currently exists. So some authors have been good guidances for me during the, this time. Nassim Taleb, who wrote the book Anti-Fragile, Things That Gain From Disorder, is really a, a fantastic theorist to be playing with at this time. So in his book, he basically argues that the world has more risks, is more random, is much more chaotic than what we would like to admit to. Um, and that there is a possibility when we go through this chaos to not only come out resilient, which is that we're able to bounce back post the chaotic happening, but that in fact, we can be anti-fragile at the end of the chaotic happening, which essentially means we come out better than when we started. That's an incredible what if. What if this period leaves us much better off than when we started? I love that consideration because right now there's a lot of, we're taking the word disruption and taking it to be quite a, for most people, a negative thing. But what Nassim Taleb is actually trying to say is that disruption is something that we should welcome because in fact, disruptions are what we need to become better. That if we allow our systems, our organizations, our our communities, our interaction, interactions to be stressed, then what can happen is that we can emerge as much better versions of ourselves. And I love this because it ties so beautifully to another author's book, Frederick Laloux, another author's thinker. Frederick Laloux wrote the book Reinventing Organization and looking at the consideration of what the next step of human consciousness is. And one of the things Frederick Leloux says is that when we are experiencing breakage, um, which many organizations are, even before COVID-19, 
where all of us are sensing that there's something wrong in the system, he basically invites us into an opportunity to tap into what he calls our evolutionary possibilities, which is that there is part of evolving is that we are invited into a process of sensing and responding to what the environment is showing us. And I've always loved this idea of sensing and responding because essentially that's what adaptation is about, right? So if you look at nature, and I love looking at nature and what we can learn from it in bio, the field of bi biomimicry. But for example, if you think of certain species in nature, they're fantastic at sensing and responding to the environment so that they can not only adapt, not only survive, but actually thrive in the environment. So I'm reminded, for example, of wood frogs in North America. Wood frogs freeze during the winter. Their bodies literally freeze so that they can avoid freezing from the environment. So their adaptation to a very cold environment is to actually freeze throughout the, the winter season. Then they unfreeze themselves after the winter. It's radical. Or if you consider Garanooks in um, the Horn of Africa and East Africa, these are the cousins of antelopes and gazelles, but actually the, their necks are way longer than these two animals because it allows them to be able to reach the taller branches in trees and therefore their competition for food is reduced. Um, we can also think of trees and their incredible ability underneath the ground to interlock their roots so that when storms and hurricanes come, they're much more anti-fragile to, they're much more resilient, actually, let me start with that. They're much more resilient to the threat of storms and strong winds. But actually in certain studies, we find that trees that then survive the period of storms and hurricanes actually come out stronger. They come out anti-fragile. So for me, the possibility that presents itself during this time, going back to what Frederick Leloux is saying, is that if we live into our evolutionary uh, purpose, we allow ourselves during this time to not be so um, consumed with this tendency to want to predict and control things, but that in fact, we see the possibility of sensing and responding so that we can emerge differently from what is a difficult time. What if? What if the only invitation at this point was not to come up with sophisticated strategies, but to just sense and to just respond and to just be with this moment? I'm reminded of a beautiful poem that my colleague Sonia introduced me to some time ago called you called lost by david uh, wagner and i think it's a powerful anchor for the time in which we are now david says stand still the trees ahead and bushes beside you are not lost wherever you are is called here and you must treat it as a powerful stranger must ask permission to know it and be known. The forest breathes. Listen. It answers, I have made this place around you. And then it ends. Stand still. The forest knows where you are. You must let it find you. What if this moment wasn't a moment of stress? What if this disruption moment, this moment of breakage was inviting you to create new eyes so you can see the world differently? What if you could just sense and respond and see what the environment is telling you, not what you are trying to tell it? What possibilities would emerge? Think about it. <laughs>